Hello, Pastor Deborah here. I wanted to come to you again so you can still see my face and connect me with my voice here on the YouTube podcast show on the Hidden Kingdoms called Love is Here, a voice of light in the darkness. We are beginning episode number 18, and it's going to be part number eight of the oppressed spirit. We have been working through a powerful foundational pillar of Pastor Deborah's that I had that I had to learn and understand deeply in order to help you out there. It was Isaiah 61 and 62. It was from the Old Testament of the Holy Bible. It was God's word to Isaiah, an Old Testament prophet, that was then even spoken out in a synagogue by a young man named Christ Jesus. And it was told to us so we would know the Father's heart, the Father's desires, and prophetic words for all of humanity. It told us of our condition spiritually, told us of what we needed spiritually, and it tells us of what is going to happen to us spiritually as we are set free, born again, replanted, and regrown, sort of speaking, inside of our own physical dirt bodies. God had a plan for us, and he was telling us ahead of time. He's a God that talks frequently, if you listen. And I had to study his words, his heart, his desires. I had to know the foundation for everything I was doing. Every email I sent, every video I make, every audio tape that I make, every interaction in the realm of the spirit, every message on LinkedIn, I had to know what was my purpose. Because my purpose had to become his purposes. I had to join with him. I had to partner with him. It wasn't going, uh, it wasn't going to learn about Christ Jesus. It was the Father's heart. Christ Jesus was on a mission for the kingdom of heaven. And his father, his father sent him. His father sent him to a cross. His father was the one that had the heart's desires, that spoke the prophetic words. Christ Jesus was a willing sacrifice, a dutiful son. You want to understand what the heart of Christ Jesus looked like. Go watch the video and listen to the music by the Hollies called He Ain't Heavy. When I hear it, I see Christ Jesus at the Last Supper, looking at his 12 disciples and singing this song to himself. Oh, they couldn't hear his thoughts, but that's what he was thinking. Then again on the cross, as he's looking down on his family, he sees all humanity as his brothers. And he was singing this song to himself. And if you learn how to listen to music and songs, God will show you that his heart is in them. He is singing them. So here in this episode, number 18 of the Love Is Here podcast show, I just wanted to come to you and say, hi, I'm still here. I've been doing ministry around the world, even right on LinkedIn, over Twitter, in my emails, on the website. I'm a busy person. Today I have a few minutes of quiet so I can record the audio and this video to you. We're also going to continue, hopefully, in another part of the oppressed spirit, which was an inspired teaching to me from Dr. Miles Monroe of the Bahamas Faith Ministries. I watched him faithfully every Sunday night from my laptop. He was a a wonderful teacher of the kingdom of heaven and that we were ignorant kings and that we didn't know who we were. He taught about prayer, the oppressed spirit, talked about getting free, a country. He was an excellent, excellent teacher to me. He's in heaven now with his wife. They had a plane crash in the Bahamas years ago, but his teachings are still out there on YouTube. His daughter and son are still continuing 
his ministry in the Bahamas. So I was a faithful student, disciple of Dr. Miles Monroe. You go watch him. You learn. You study each video. Take notes. So in the oppressed spirit, it was one teaching that he gave, and then the Holy Spirit inspired some other things. So you slowly will get that here on the podcast. Then we'll get into some other areas, maybe about our old man versus the new man, maybe about lust and how it works in our lives. I have other wonderful books I've written, letters and stories that are coming. So you will learn about a voice of light in the darkness and what the darkness is inside of you and what the voice of light is that's coming to you. This video, as you see, is from Pixabay. I get free motion videos. And I'm recording in Zoom Pro. And this is just to say, look, in the center is a something. We might call it the big blast up there in the solar system. And the stars are coming out. And this is a God speaking his words out, coming from his throne, his light and his glory out. This came into Deborah, and I became a pastor. I was cleansed and purified by it at the Brownsville Assembly of God revival from 1995 to about 2000 with evangelist Steve Hill. He too has gone on to heaven. He got off track, he got into greed and money, and God took him out. And sometimes our missions are short and sometimes they are long. Mine has been very long since, probably since I was a teenager, if not before, I was loving the most unloving people. I love people with physical disabilities, different colors of skin, different nationalities. Some of them, you didn't know if they were a man or a woman. I loved them if they got pregnant in the sixth grade. I lo never thought bad about the boys who did it or the girls who got pregnant. Oh, I, I love the drug addicts, people in jail. I love people from all over the world. And I would give that love out during the day. People would ask me, how do I do that? I said, I don't know. I just loved them. And then I would tell them that God would then fill me back up at nighttime. So my, my nighttime, my dreams were always real. I was always dreaming and writing and in visions and I didn't know it. But God was developing my spirit and he was developing my heart for you. He had a vision that one day I would be right here in my living room at 72 years old, teaching you. But I had to do a lot of studying. I just told a young crown prince over in the Middle East today that I had to do a lot of studying. I do a lot of videos. I watch a lot of Chinese historical videos. I watch ancient Egyptian videos and movies and ancient empires. I study kingdoms and governments and kings and emperors. I study the political system. I study relationships. I study just society. I'm always looking to see who is behind what's going on. I have to understand kingdoms and territory and expansion. I have to understand the heart of kings and generals. I had to understand a lot. I even watch movies that are made by avatars. They're sort of gaming movies. I love those. I'm listening to music. I've been listening to the village people lately about the music is not going to go away and how it influences our body and our spirit and our soul. Love the village people. Oh, love music. I've got a lot of wonderful songs. Stevie Wonder, for once in my life, it's about how when you find Christ Jesus, you're, you're good to go. And people don't realize a lot of these singers sing songs of spiritual nature, but they relate it to a human love nature. But I had to see beyond our human love into the realm of the spirit. I've been working with people in the realm of the spirit probably since 1995. People come to me. They come through animals and trees. I move in the gift of discerning of spirits from the Holy Spirit. I can see you and hear you. There is no time in the realm of the spirit. There's no nighttime, daytime. So when you're sleeping, your spirit is still alive and so is mine. It's moving. 
time is different in the realm of the spirit. I have worked with people in witchcraft, deep, deep Satanist, world leaders, Illuminati, people that are in politics, crown princes, kings, business people, millionaires and billionaires. And I have had to learn how to stay quiet. I don't talk about it. I don't use their real names. I do ministry to the spirit. I can even go, I didn't realize it, but I was being trained to go inside a woman's womb at the time of abortion was coming, or death through a miscarriage, to cuddle and hold that little baby spirit in there and dedicate it to God and send it on up. I've been to hell to get people. A lot of different religions and faiths don't believe the same in this God, the God of the kingdom of heaven the God and Father of Christ Jesus, and they don't believe in Him. So I have to go get them in hell. That's all spirit work. So here in this Love Is Here podcast show, A Voice of Light in the Darkness, you're going to hear many of those stories. Almost unbelievable. But there is another realm out there. And most of you know it. You're in it. You have strange dreams. Strange dreams. Some of you dream that you are in darkness. Some of you are in that world when you are having mental health issues. Some of you live in it in the past and memories when you get triggered. The spirit realm is 24-7. There's good. There's light. There's evil. There's darkness. There's creatures. Every human being has a spirit. And it lives in that realm. A lot of people always ask me for money and food and stuff. I was never anointed to do the earthly things to your physical body. I pray that you will partner with the Lord. And he will provide those people who he has granted that to give you money and food and clothes. My job was to go into the spirit. The spiritual part. To do spiritual ministry. Even when I'm doing ministry, which I've done in hospitals, rehabilitation institutions, homeless shelters, done it in businesses, in committees, in jails and prisons, in hospice work with people dying, in my neighborhood, with neighbors. But I never say anything to them because I would sound weird. Yeah, you might consider me just a weird, weird lady. But I wanted to come to you today and say, Hi, I'm still here. I'm still alive. It's still my voice and I'm still recording. So you would still understand me when you hear my voice. You can look at my picture. It's on the LinkedIn profile. It's on the website of www.acopyloveishere.org. There's a lot of the videos, the music, and you will learn spiritual things. Also, I want you to go watch Dr. Miles Monroe of the Bahamas Faith Ministries. Watch all his videos on YouTube. Go watch the Brownsville Assembly of God Revival with Linda Cooley, praise and worship leader, Pastor John Kilpatrick, and Steve Hill, the evangelist. Watch his sermons. You'll see the atmosphere that I grew up in from 1995 to 2000. I was cleansed, got into deliverance work, casting out devils. That's real. The Catholic Church believes in that, and many others do. Yes, but that's spiritual work. Healing has to come there first, then filter through your soul, then filter to your physical body. There's a lot of wonderful teachers out there, a lot of people doing good teaching and helping people. I'm just one. I'm not the only one. I am a spiritual mother to everyone. I am a spiritual global teacher, master teacher. But I sit under my master teacher, the Holy Spirit. I'm still learning. I'm still studying. I'm still looking up words in the Webster's Dictionary, the Strong's Concordance. Still studying, looking, understanding, relationships, politics, leadership, kingdoms. Ancient kingdoms, current kingdom, politics, politicians, average 
people, business, finance. I have to know a lot. I have to see beyond what we see with our eyes. I have to know without a shadow of a doubt what the truth is. Who's behind what's going on? What is really going on inside of us, in the world, among the nations? What's the goal? What's tr- Where are we trying to get to? Where's the world going to? So I wanted to come and say hi. I'm here. I'm working. You keep following. You keep uh, watching the videos. Subscribe if you want to. You don't have to. I'm not one of those kind trying to build that up. Because I just want you to watch. Sort of like visiting a church. But never joining in membership. But sitting quietly. Maybe watching on your laptop. That's how I used to watch Dr. Miles Monroe. And many, many others. Because God took me out of a regular church. Did you know I was kicked out of an LGBT church? I used to go there. Now I'm straight. I'm married, got children and grandchildren. I was kicked out. Asked to leave because they were afraid that my kind of love would upset them. So I left. I didn't get offended. But I'm still doing ministry with them. I've, I've seen so much. I can't talk about a lot of it. Because you would be surprised at the people who are in the kingdom of darkness, who are in the dark arts, who are in the occult, who are doing the bidding of another king besides Christ Jesus. You would be surprised. You would be surprised at what's going on inside of you. But I wanted to come and just say hi again to you. Hi. And use a video. And so you listen to this podcast of Love is Here. A Voice of Light in the Darkness, episode number 18. We're going to be working in Isaiah 61, verses 4. I don't know if I'll get through all of 4 and 5, but we'll get as far as we can. And if I have a little bit of time, I'll pick up in the oppressed spirit. If not, we'll just finish Isaiah 61 and 62 and get back to the oppressed spirit. I had to learn about the oppressed spirit. I had to learn about it. From Isaiah 61 and 62. I hear, had to hear the loving heart of a father for you, for all of humanity. I had to see his deeds, his actions, his willingness to die for you. To carry you. Like the hollies sing. He ain't heavy. He's my brother. And when you find him, you'll be like Josh and Matthew. And you'll be able to sing that Stevie Wonder song. For once in my life, I have someone who loves me. And you'll never be alone again. I understand most of your hearts are searching. You even look at moons and desire to have a relationship. You're trying to have relationships deep in the spirit. Your spirit's lonely. Your soul is lonely. Oh, you might have many wives, many children, but you're not happy. There's something missing. I usually spiritually adopt each one of you because the mother, the mother's love, which is agape, is the anchor to your soul and your spirit. We start there with love. Not a human sexual love, but a mother to a child, to an infant. So you be encouraged. You keep listening and you keep coming and you keep watching. And I'll see you out there in the realm of the spirit. Bye. This is Pastor Deborah. Bye-bye. Hello, Pastor Deborah here. And thank you again for coming and listening and watching the Hidden Kingdoms podcast show entitled Love is Here, A Voice of Light in the Darkness. I am so grateful that you are following. You are being a disciple. You are listening and watching. There's much for you to learn, so we'll go slow. I thank you for watching my entrance video. I wanted to let you know I'm still here and what I look like as the days go on. Sometimes you need to see a face and you need to see that it's a real person, not some kind of AI-generated computer voice. It is me, Pastor Deborah. And we're beginning our episode of our podcast, number 18. 
18. We've been working through some wonderful scriptures of Isaiah 61 and Isaiah 62. They were the Father's heart, the Father's desires, and the Father's prophetic words for all of humanity. I've had to study them, write them, look up the words, ponder them, and think about the Father's heart, why He sent His Son to go to a cross, why He sends His Word now in dreams and visions. What is He up to? What is this all about, the different faiths, different religions, the spiritual wars, the spiritual fights, the battles? What is going on here on planet Earth and on the inside of us? These scriptures, Isaiah 61, we have been working through to sort of a precursor to continuing on with the oppressed spirit. I had to learn about an oppressed spirit, and I learned about it from Dr. Miles Monroe in one of his early teachings when he was at a conference. The Holy Spirit took it, inspired it, ex expanded on it, so I would have an understanding of you the oppressed spirit. I had to know much about the human spirit, that one that travels outside of its body, that one that leaves the body during dreams, that one that escapes when child abuse and trauma come, that one that lives on past eternal, that lives on past, past physical death. I had to study you, the forever you, the forever person. I had to study how the spirit was born, oppressed, how it was taken into captivity by the soul and the flesh. I had to study hard because I was going to be sent to help you. Oh, I had been praying for you, crying out to God to send people to help you. For months and months I would cry over you, for you, begging God to send somebody. One day he said to me, way back in about 1995, he was going to send me to you. I said, I don't know who they are, where they are. How do I help them? He said, I will teach you. So began my intensive study with God. I went to churches, but that wasn't where I got my teaching. I got it out of books, movies, studying the authorized King James Bible, reading true biographies watching more movies, reading more books, study, study, pretty much by myself, all alone, taking notes, pondering, thinking, even watching music videos. God would speak to me, watching nature, watching animals, flowering plants, roses. God would speak to me. He started moving me in the gift of discerning of spirits, where I could see into and hear and know what was going on in the realm of the spirit the realm where you were, that I was going to be coming to. I had to learn how to be calm in my soul, in my physical body. I had to be able to hear his voice at a moment's notice, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I had to learn to be calm. I had to learn to his heart for you. So here in this section of the episodes that we are working through, this is number 18. And hopefully we'll get to some of the oppressed spirit teaching also, which would be part number eight. We're going to pick up in Isaiah 61. And we're going to pick up in verse number four. But let's first open up with prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your written word that was sent so long ago through Isaiah. Thank you for being a speaking God, a talking God, even now. And thank you for showing us your heart your desires and prophetic words in Isaiah 61 and 62 for all of humanity, for all ages, even those in the womb and infancy, of every race, every sex, no sex, every color, everyone, from ages back and ages forward. We thank you that your heart's desires never change and that you give us a peek into it through Isaiah 61. Help me to teach it, to speak it, to those that are listening, so that they too may understand you and your work and your words. In the name of Christ Jesus, your word that was made flesh, sent to us to help us 
In the name of Christ Jesus, amen. Okay, we're going to pick up in Isaiah 61, verse 4, out of the authorized King James Bible. You will hear a lot of the words spiritual and spirit in front of the words. I learned from listening to Jesus Christ at the well with a lady from Samaria that God is a spirit and he is looking for our spirits to worship him and know him in spirit and in truth. I learned that his words to us were spirit words and they were life for our spirit. So I had to learn how to read the Bible by putting the word spiritual in front of the words. They would help me as I was studying the kingdom of heaven, the word of God, what he was up to, his heart, his prophetic words, his desires, and you. So let's listen. We'll be kid. We're beginning verse number four of Isaiah 61. And they, the spiritual trees, those are newborn spiritual creations when you become a child of God and you believe in your spirit that Christ came and went to a cross for you and you accept his forgiveness and mercy and believe that he is the son of the living God made flesh and that he rose again from the tomb and is now at work down here Oh, you can believe that he is just a teacher and a prophet and was a man. But you must go the next step, that he was the Son of God, sent, anointed by a Holy Spirit from the kingdom of heaven. He was a priest of that kingdom. He was a king, a politician, a warrior. He told Pilate he was. He was a son, fulfilling the desires of his father to be the sacrificial lamb for all of humanity's sins from the ages long ago to the ages yet to come. He walked out of the tomb after three days in a glorified body and he is still here now working in dreams and visions. There's a lot of those stories out on YouTube. You'll hear about people going to hell, dying, meeting him, bad people, gang members, unbelievers, He's at work. So your belief has to change, not your faith. Faith isn't strong enough, but your belief, something you're willing to die for. A God who loves you, Christ Jesus, and a Father who sent him. So here in verse 4, they that be us, the spiritual beings, the forever person, that he calls spiritual trees, of his spiritual righteousness, his spiritual salvation, his spiritual plants, trees, that he will plant on the earth. I am a tree, a righteous spiritual tree planted here on this earth of his spiritual righteousness. And these people shall spiritually build, restore, reconstruct, recreate the old spiritual waste. That means the spiritual hearts and minds and souls of the forever person. My job is to bring light and food and water to you for your spirit, to help build up this new creature, to restore unto it for all the waste, the destruction that had happened to it. They, the Heavenly Father continues, my spiritual trees of my spiritual righteousness shall spiritually raise up the former spiritual desolations, the heart and soul of spiritual man and the word of God itself in the dirt bodies. And they, my spiritual trees, of my spiritual righteousness shall spiritually repair, restore, rebuild, renew the spiritual waste cities, the spiritual heart and mind and soul of the forever person, that spiritual being that lives on past death. 
You. Yes, I'm talking to you. The forever person. These spiritual men, like Pastor Deborah, these spiritual trees, shall spiritually restore, repair, rebuild, renew the spiritual desolations, the forsaken areas, those that are hollow and empty, vain, empty of my spiritual kingdom of heaven's light and truth and knowledge, wisdom and glory and my purposes and my value for them of many generations that they do not know about. I am going to do a major work inside of them. Verse number five. And spiritual strangers shall stand and they shall spiritually feed and nourish and rule over and care for your spiritual flocks. And the spiritual alien shall be your spiritual plowman and your vine dressers. Others will help you. They will be there that you may not know who they are. Verse number six. But you, O spiritual child of mine, the Heavenly Father, you, a spiritual tree of my spiritual righteousness that I have spiritually planted on the earth, that be Pastor Deborah, and you soon shall be spiritually named, called. By your spiritual nature will you be designated, identified, live out of, and become in your spiritual nature the spiritual priest of the Lord God. Spiritual men will spiritually call you, name you, identify you. You, the spiritual ministers of God, the heavenly king of the kingdom of heaven, God the Most High, God and Father of Christ Jesus. You shall spiritually eat, take in, live by, be nourished by the spiritual riches of the spiritual Gentiles. What does that mean? That my nourishment will see and be fulfilled by seeing the Gentiles, the unbelievers, come into the family, come into the garden come into the kingdom of heaven and their spiritual glory shall you spiritually boast it. they have ruled the world the government politics business finance and they will come into the kingdom and I will be so happy I will see their hearts change as they also rule and reign for the kingdom of heaven on earth and I will be glad and I will be boasting that they too now can be fulfilled. Isaiah 61 and 62. All right, let's end here for today. Of the Isaiah 61 verses. And let's get back to a little bit of the oppressed spirit. We should be beginning in part number eight of the oppressed spirit. We'd been talking about and defining and looking at it according to the teachings and the inspiration by Dr. Miles Monroe of the Bahamas Faith Ministry. I had to learn about the oppressed spirit, that be you, so I could know what to say to you, how to pray for you, and what you needed. So let's pick up. An oppressed spirit has no freedom of will, it has no freedom of thought. It is oppressed, sunk down low and deep. And one has to have freedom of self so they can live in this new unknown self. This unknown self, this newly reincarnated new person that gets created on the inside, 
who is free of oppression, no longer timid or passive. Most victims of, say, child abuse still can't live in a new self. They are stuck in the oppressive identity of being a victim of child abuse. They cannot move on. They cannot yet create a new identity. They do, in a way, it's called multiple personalities, but they can't permanently stay in that state. The old them comes up, so they have, there's still an oppressed spirit with an oppressed mind that's broken and fractured, and their will is still oppressed. They are not free yet of the oppression, where they would be no longer timid or passive. This new creation, this new creature that's never existed before. I went through this in a wonderful story called It's Time. Jan, who I used to be, died inside of me, went away. And Pastor Deborah arose. And Pastor Deborah would look at Jan's life and say, That's not me. I never did that. Didn't marry that man. Never did drugs and alcohol. I'm a new creature in Christ never existed before, had no past that was Jan's. Took a while, maybe about two years, so I could live out of a new identity, and I could no longer have the thoughts, the feelings, the connections, the bonds, the oppression of Jan. I was free in my will, free in my spirit. I was a new creature, brand new. I was no longer who I used to be. And the Heavenly Father helped me with that spiritual transformation. And He desires for all humanity to become reborn, recreated, as Pastor Deborah did. Reborn unto Him through Christ Jesus from the cross. This new spiritual man that Pastor Deborah had become was now free from all oppression, timidity and passivity, ungodly concepts, ungodly ideas, ungodly thoughts, ungodly control, lies and deceptions of self and others. All the soul ties were broken. Pastor Deborah was free. She had never existed before. Jan had passed away. Pastor Deborah even buried Jan in a tomb, changed her checks, did a lot of things to take on a new identity that was no longer an oppressed spirit. A free spiritual man does not wait for others. They get on with their personal battle, their task of being free on the inside. A free man from oppression is always willing to step out into the unknown even though fearful and not knowing if anyone is coming with them or what is the end, but they trust God and His strength to get them through the journey and to help them overcome their fear of this unknown self. It is a strange, strange thing to have been an oppressed spirit. Pastor Deborah was. She was Jan. Jan died, and Pastor Deborah rose up, took a lot of training, took a lot of mental work, a lot of spiritual work, but I'm fine now. One must believe in God the Most High and His description of the free man, the unknown self. Deep inside of the spiritual man's heart and mind, is the desire and the will to be spiritually free and not oppressed. I had to know that. No matter what I saw, what I heard, I had to know that. Not to be dominated, but to be free under God the Most High. And with a free will that freely chooses to obey and submit to the laws of the kingdom of heaven. But most spiritual men, forever people, 
will leave their physical body upon physical death without ever discovering their true self and who is unknown to them or even freeing themselves of the oppressors and their oppression. But every once in a while, this oppressed spirit breaks through, comes out to the surface, but because of one's cultural and family training, one will bury it quickly. This breakout is called giving one a piece of one's mind. That is the free will of the spirit. The spiritual man breaking out, shouting out, expressing itself. But you are trained to suppress it. One is conditioned to never resist anything. Be nice. Let them in. Cooperate. Love everybody. Be submissive. These words have trained one to believe that those who speak these words and their authority and their dominion dominates them, controls them. And if the words don't do it, the physical beatings will, the rapes, the drugs, they will get you under control in your soul, in your will, in your emotions, and your body for their purposes. Lots of propaganda, lots of selling, lots of words. You can see that in the matrix. Downloading, 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 lying to you, deceiving you, making you believe you everything you think is real until you're like Neo and you're unplugged by the god of dreams, Morpheus, and you learn that you lived in a dream world and none of it was true. You were oppressed, you were controlled, you were lied to by people who created machines, by machines themselves, by propaganda, by news, by people, by others. You, and it'll make you hurt and sad that you know no truth. But there are always Morpheuses and Trinities. We are here to help you break free. But inside of each of us, there is a natural spiritual inclination to be free of oppression, domination, oppressive people, environments, victimization, the past, memories, and to be a free spirit under the Heavenly Father. That is in us always, no matter what. But we have been almost completely harnessed, controlled, enslaved, like a broken, trained horse. Because the oppressors, the controllers, the dominators have placed certain things in our lives that administer pain. If we move out of line, you see that in the horse's bridle. He doesn't move by himself. You pull on the bridle in his mouth, and he turns in the direction to avoid the pain. You kick him in his sides, and he's trying to get away from the pain. They, the things that control us, come by threats of violence, intimidation, instilling fear of death, pain, isolation, rejection, abandonment put restrictions on us through culture, religion, faith, families, politics. We're told, follow the herd, or we will be in trouble. If you do certain things, they, the oppressors, the controllers, the dominators, that they don't like, or they don't want, or they can't control you, or if you resist them, and their control mechanisms, their pressure points, like a horse. Then pain is applied to you to control you, such as a bridle <clears throat> in a horse's mouth. Now it's social media post. You're blasted. 
You're talked about. You're framed. Social media works hard. Propaganda. Through the application of pain in the horse's mouth, the horse turns in the direction to stop the pain. The rider is applying through the bit and the bridle in the mouth of the horse. The rider is not controlling the horse. The horse is responding to pain. So when you try to break free, pain is coming. Mental pain, physical pain, spiritual pain, pain in your finances, your relationships, pain at work, pain at jobs, pain on social media, pain will be applied. And this is what has been done to humans, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, physically the culture's traditions, the religion or faith rules, the family, the demonics, political correctness have put a bit and bridle in one's life, which tells you through applying pain and threats, intimidation, fears, rejections, attacks that tell one not to go in that direction or we, your controllers, will give you pain to stop you. To be free, one must spit the bit and bridle out of one's mouth, be unplugged from a matrix, downloading codes and information with the help of another. Morpheus helped Neo break free. Neo had a choice, but he was searching. Watch the movie, The Matrix, 1999. Learn. Watch. Even the horse cannot take the bit and bridle out of his own mouth. That requires someone else, like Morpheus, to understand that Neo was searching, even in his dreams. So everyone needs help to take the controlling mechanisms out of their life, to break off the chains, the fetters, the bindings of invisible, ungodly deceptions, lies, thoughts, beliefs, and to break their power through breaking of the soul ties and the destruction of these spiritual strongholds of the oppressors. Why would we need to do this? So that one can become the new spiritual creature that the Most High God of the Kingdom of Heaven, the Father of Christ Jesus, desires each and every human spirit to become. We find what that is in Isaiah 61. Read it. You'll learn about your condition and what he has to do and what his goals are for you in your freedom. A free spirit, a free will that freely chooses to obey and love the Heavenly Father and becomes the true spiritual king, ruler, leader of oneself and of all of creation on earth as it is done from heaven. The Heavenly Father desires to show and reveal and manifest to all, to you, little one, to help you discover who He says one really is now and help each and every human human, to develop into the fullness of Christ as a Son of God and be planted as a tree of righteousness on earth so others can take part and see and come to know what Isaiah 61 is all about, what freedom is, that they too need to be free from the oppression of spirit, soul, and physical body. And I want to end this section of our teaching here in this podcast of Love is Here, a voice of light in the darkness right here. So we don't go too far. This is a lot to cover. 
to understand the Father's heart towards you, to understand your oppression in your spirit, soul, and physical body. And yet I had to know that deep inside of you, there was some part of you that wanted freedom, wanted to be loved, was looking for a mama, was looking for help. And so my training began by looking at the oppressed spirit, you, and the matrix that you lived in, looking at the controllers, the oppressors, looking what they use to intimidate you and how it works. Even now today, I am very aware of their tactics. I know who they are, who's working behind the scenes, what they want to do with you. My job is to help you become free, to show you a father's heart, a father's desires and prophetic words out of Isaiah 61 and 62 for you. So I'm coming. I'm there with you in the darkness. Listen to my voice. We'll go slow. You're not alone anymore. Help has come. Light is here. Freedom is on its way. Stay with me. I am with you. Love always and forever. Pastor Deborah.